Merry Christmas, 009. I'm Sir Hilary Blair. No, 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 Mr. Ballard. Your accent's slipping. And so is your fake identity. I think you hit the mold Vespers a little hard last night. There's this ringing singing in my ears like someone strangling a cat. Where were we partying last night? At the Anna de Armas Appreciation Society Christmas party. Look, why don't you open one of your Christmas presents early? That'll cheer you up. Oh, it's from my foster brother Franz. Franz Oberhauser? Yes, you remember when my parents were tragically killed in that freak climbing accident? Well, Franz and his father took me in. Oh, Franz and I go way back. He really likes me. He's never one to bear a grudge. He loves cats. Look at the wrapping, it's so clever. It's got the stag from Skyfall. Have you tried turning it upside down? Oh, it looks like an octopus. Now that really is clever. Are you gonna tell him or shall I? Tell me what? Let's just say his present might blow. Yes, I felt it. It might not be quite what you're expectoring. Oh, yes, 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 but Christoph Waltz is great. Yeah, great at doing Woody Allen impersonations. Speaking of perspective. Yes, he's not as method as Savalas, who cut off his own earlobes to make himself look more like a count. Pardon? I said count. Oh. Yeah, I'd heard he'd gone completely. <laughs> Oh, he's got me the Japanese apron that Q wears in No Time to Die. When he's in his flat cooking up dinner and then Daniel Craig and Naomi Harris burst in. Oh, it's probably because Franz told me he's cooking me up this Japanese speciality dish called Fugu, which is made from puffer fish. It's really tasty apparently and totally not dangerous to eat. Just as long as it's the fish that you eat that disagrees with you, rather than you disagreeing with the fish that ate you or something. Oh, whatever, I'm famished. Let's try it on. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. Blair Ballard, the bon vivant, very much at your service. I do hope that you're all in fine, festive form. Now, this is a fun little unboxing video and it basically an excuse for me to open one of my Christmas presents a little early and to show you this uber cool Maikake apron. That's the same one that Ben Wishaw wears in the scene in No Time To Die when Daniel Craig and Naomi Harris just kind of pitch up inconveniently just as he's preparing a sort of romantic meal for a hot date, though whether the date would actually enjoy Q's courgette surprise, well, that's anyone's guess. Now Q is wearing one of these, it's called a maikake, and it's a traditional apron made in the traditional way by a company in Japan called Anything. They're based in a place called Toyohashi in the Aichi Prefecture in Japan. Now maikake in Japanese means front hanging, which sounds, you know, kind of pendulous, let's say. It's a design that hasn't really changed in hundreds of years. The use of maikake as Japanese work aprons dates way back to the 16th century. Now here's a little history for you. They were originally beloved by Japanese shopkeepers and merchants in the Edo period and are more than just your regular sort of kitchen or work aprons. Rice farmers, sake and soy sauce breweries, miso paste makers, and among other professionals would wear these maikake adorned with their sort of shop logo as a means of advertising their business, basically. 
Not only did the shop staff wear these um, one-of-a-kind aprons, but maikake were also gifted to customers as sort of tokens of appreciation. Traditionally, merchants would drape their maikakes on their shoulders as well to pr provide some protection when they were carrying heavy bags of rice or grain. Artisans, potters, other craftsmen, they still use them today in Japan in, in the craft workshops of the, of the suburbs. Sometimes uh, they're worn in restaurants as well. Now, whilst they're not fireproof, the thick woven fabric also provides protection from heat, and some folks wear them when they go gardening. Now, production of maikake boomed at the turn of the 20th century with the introduction of automated shuttle looms. But, however, Jap Japan made canvas fall out of fashion in the post-war Japan era because, basically, there was the availability of cheaper imported cotton and synthetic fibres. Now, Anything itself, this company here, was founded in 2004 in a bid to save the traditional maikake apron. And their aprons are actually woven using a 100-year-old shuttle loom made rather randomly by Toyota. Now, rather than look towards quick and easy mass production methods, the team at Anything returned back to their roots. Their richly textured indigo fabric in their maikake has been developed thanks to the knowledge of a few remaining traditional maikake craftsmen in Toyohashi itself. Now, each maikake is woven by hand, and the shuttle looms make rugged, long-lasting, 100% cotton canvas out of strong thread. It's a bit like selvage, and it's extremely durable, yet also really, really comfortable. Now, the maikake is, is dyed in a traditional Japanese indigo color, and then after the dyeing, they use a silk screen printing method to make the patterns and logos. Then they put the buttons on, and they sew the belt. Now, let's open this packaging because it's really rather cool. On the outside, you can see this really cool, it's called a mizohiki knot on the packaging, which symbolizes the kind of the tying method that was traditionally uh, used for maikake back in the olden days around the waist. Now, I love this little mini maikake on the front. It's really, really sweet. Now, that's what I call front hanging. Um, it could not look more Japanese, really. It's just really, really cool. Now, let's unwrap this baby and see what's going on on the inside. Oh, that's so cool. My Japanese is a bit rusty, but it says, there you go. There's some more for you to go for. Oh, it shows you on the back as well, how to tie your maikake, but it's all in ja Oh no, rest the apron on the prominent bone at the top of your pelvis. Postpartum mothers should instead set it on the pelvis to make the hip joint stable. Breathe in deeply, then release your breath lightly. Pull on the belts, crossing your back tightly, then bring them in around the front. Lace up the belt securely at the front. Well, look, let's have a look first at the actual apron itself. Oh, so cool. Here we go. Oh, it really is very, very cool. Look at that. There we are. Now. The one that Q wears in the film is actually emblazoned with a stylized, it's called a diamond Fuji, a natural phenomenon where the, either the rising or the setting sun uh, aligns with the peak of Mount Fuji, giving that kind of wow thing. This maikake is also imprinted uh, with the Japanese characters reading uh, Nippon Daiyu, which roughly translates means representative of Japan. It's a classic design that embodies centuries of Japanese history. Now on to how you wear this little baby. Now the apron is tied with an iconic red and white belt. It helps support the lower back, whether you're working in the kitchen, the workshop, or outdoors. To wear a maikake in the traditional apron style, you rest the apron um, at the top of your hips, and then you cross the belt firmly around the back before bringing the ends forward. And then you kind of fasten them securely at the front with a basic shoelace knot tight tightly. Now, ooh, there we go. Now, they've been favored by tradesmen and craftsmen for centuries as they alleviate stress on the lower back by kind of properly aligning your pelvis. And it's said not just to help prevent back problems, but also to provide extra energy during work. Uh, very Japanese. Now, the belt itself, and that's about 260 centimeters long. That's about eight and a half feet. Um, and is suitable for waists up to 95 centimeters. So that's about 37 and a half inches. The apron itself, at 67 centimeters by 47 centimeters, if you include the fringe at the bottom, which is about two feet by one and a half feet. Now, if you want to get one of your hands on one of these little beauties, you can get them directly from anything in Japan. They cost around $55, which I think is a bit of a bargain 
for something so cool and bond related. Now you could use it obviously for cooking, you can use it for barbecuing, but they're so versatile you could find any excuse to whack it on, align your pelvis and have a bit of front hanging action. Now I'll put a link down in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this little peek at uh, Japan and this apron's backstory. If you've enjoyed it, please do consider smirching those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't done so already, that is. It really, really does make a big difference. Now, let's take this off and get back to the tree and those damn lazen bees. <laughs>well, what a year it's been. Oh, they made us wait, but we finally got to see No Time To Die in the cinemas. 2022 should prove to be even more exciting because we've got obviously all the sixth anniversary of Bond on film, all the celebrations and events coming up. So keep it here with us at the Bond Vivant. For now though, may your Blu-ray extras be bountiful with plenty of commentary for Michael G. Wilson and Carrie Fukunaga. And may you have a peaceful Christmas day with no speculation as whether it's gonna be Tom Hardy or Henry Cavill as the new Bond. And may there be a screen accurate doo-doo under every Christmas tree. But for now, this has been Blair Ballard and friends for the Bon Vivant bidding very festive Bondian farewell. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smirching those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time. Do it all, I found. He needs reindeer. Reindeer, even though they try, they need other things. Once a year, they have to fly. And they don't... Oh, do you like Japanese sake, Mr. Bond? Or would you prefer vodka martini? Oh, no. I like sake. Especially when it's served at the correct temperature. 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit like this is. For a European, you are exceptionally cultivated. <laughs>